Pedro, we're live. All right, live is running. Sergeant Hope, if you could do the cloud recording. All right, and you may begin with your opening statement. Thank you. Good morning. Welcome to the committee vote on finance. At this time, will all panelists please turn on your videos? I repeat, at, all, at this time, will all panelists please turn on your videos? Thank you. To minimize disruption, please place all electronic devices to vibrate or silent mode. Chair, drum, we are ready to begin. Okay, I just want to um, ask council to send me the list of um, all of my colleagues who are on here. I don't think I have that yet. Uh, but anyway, good morning and welcome to today's finance committee meeting. I'm council member Daniel Drum and I chair the committee. I'll introduce my colleagues in a moment. Today, the committee will be voting on three items. One article 11 property tax exemption, a transparency resolution, and intro 2136, which would authorize two bids to increase their assessments. First, we have the land use item. 1402 York Avenue in Council Member Kalos District is the site of a new construction affordable housing project consisting of 11 units, 10 of which will be permanently affordable. Today, um, today's action will provide a full 40 year article 11 property tax exemption to support this project. Uh, Council Member Kalos is supportive of the proposed exemption. Second, we have the transparency resolution. The transparency resolution sets forth the new designation and changes in designation of certain organizations receiving local aging, anti-poverty and youth discretionary funding and funding pursuant to certain initiatives in the budget. As with all transparency resolutions, council members will have to sign a disclosure form indicating whether or not a conflict exists with any of the groups on the attached list. If any council member has a potential conflict of interest with any of the organizations listed, he or she has the opportunity to disclose the conflict at the time of their vote. As a reminder, please uh, disclose any conflicts you may have with proposed subcontractors used by organizations sponsored by discretionary funding. These disclosures must be made before the subcontractor can be approved. Disclosure forms must be completed and submitted prior to the vote on the transparency resolution and may be emailed to Charles Davis. Finally, we have intro 2136, which would authorize two bids to increase the amounts they expend annually. The council previously approved resolution 1471 on October 29th, setting today as the date for a public hearing on this legislation. The budget increases have been requested by the property owners within the boundaries of each bid and would be used to enhance the services provided. The details about which bids would see increases and the amount sought are set forth in the, in the briefing documents prepared by the finance staff. Deputy Commissioner Lays Backer from the Department of, of uh, Small Sur Business Services is here to testify regarding the requested assessment increases and we'll hear from him in a minute after he is sworn in by council. But let me introduce my colleagues before we uh, do that. Uh, we have been joined by council members and a subcommittee co-chair, Vanessa Gibson, council members Cornegie, uh, Cumbo, Majority Leader Cumbo, uh, uh, Council Member uh, Rosenthal, uh, Van Bremer, Moskowitz, Adams, Grudenchik, Ayala, Moya, Powers, Lewis, and Mario. Koslowitz. <laughs> okay, and now um, bear with me one minute. Okay, and Council, would you swear in um, uh, Mr. Backer, please? I will, and also we were just joined by Council Member Jonai. Um, do you affirm that your testimony will be truthful to the best of your knowledge, information, and belief? I do. Thank you. You may proceed. Thank you. Good morning, Chair Drum, members of the Finance Committee. So good to see so many of you all at once. Hope you're all doing well and staying healthy. I'm Michael Blaise Backer, Deputy Commissioner for Neighborhood Development at the Department of Small Business Services, and I wish to express our support for the law providing an increase in the amount to be expended in two business improvement districts or bids. To propose an assessment increase, bids must complete a multi-step review process overseen by SBS. 
The bid board of directors, which includes local property owners, merchants, and residents, as well as representatives from the city comptroller, borough president, city council, and SBS, must review and approve the proposed assessment increase. Additionally, SBS requires all bids to submit a five-part justification outlining how the increase will be allocated, minutes from the board meeting when the increase was approved, and letters of support by all city council members represented in the bid boundaries. SBS then reviews these justifications and determines whether they are sufficient to bring to city council. This year, SBS is also considering the impacts of the COVID-19 pandemic. Throughout the city, bids have been called upon to deliver an increased level of services and support to the small business community reeling from the public health and economic impacts of the virus. Every single bid has been scouring their budgets for savings and efficiencies. Many bids have opted to forego assessment increases this year, having found sufficient savings, but for some an increase is critical to continuing services and support during these challenging times. As required by law, each of the two bids published a notice of this public hearing at least once in a local newspaper having general circulation in the districts, specifying the time and place of today's hearing and stating the proposed amount to be expended annually. Each bid is also certified that they have mailed a letter to property owners informing them about the proposed assessment increase and the time and place of this public hearing. Is it a priority of SBS that assessment increase proposals focus on enhancing programs and services provided to the district? The two bids proposing assessment increases are doing so to address vital needs and changing conditions on the ground. For example, Bryant Park will offset declines in program revenues caused by the effects of the COVID-19 outbreak and recovery, specifically changing the configuration and staffing the Winter Village to accommodate proper distancing and following all health guidance, anticipating lower volume of park guests and scaling back on revenue generating programs due to the outbreak. For Flatbush and Ostrand Junction, the increase will provide the bid with much needed funds to stabilize supplementary sanitation services in the district, thereby relieving financial pressure and allowing the organization to deliver services that are most critically needed to support the commercial corridor. In addition to investments in supplementary sanitation, this increase will allow the bid to provide programming on the new Hillel Plaza and hire additional staff to further promote the district. The proposed increases for FY21 range from $150,000 to $900,000, varying according to the budget size, district size, and proposed changes in programs and services. The proposed increases are for Bryant Park from $1,600,000 to $2,500,000 and Flatbush and Ocean Junction from $200,000 to $350,000. The city's 76 bids invest over $167 million into neighborhood economies in the form of supplemental services and programs that serve more than 93,000 businesses across the city. Bids have been valuable and proven partners in ongoing initiatives and neighborhood revitalization and economic development across the five boroughs, making New York City neighborhoods cleaner, safer, and more vibrant. Bids are also advocates for small businesses in their districts, helping them to navigate government, facilitating networking among fellow business owners, providing business retention support, and attracting shoppers to the area. Currently, bids have been critical partners in executing the city's pandemic response. They have been advocates for small businesses, boosting marketing efforts and pushing in programs for those businesses that are open, having distributed PPE to local storefront businesses, and remained an important liaison between government and their commercial corridors in distributing accurate, up-to-date information and provided direct technical assistance, helping businesses apply for grants and loans. In partnership with city government, bids help spur job creation, improve the quality of life for New Yorkers and visitors, enhance the city's tax base, and strengthen local economies. Representatives from each bid requesting assessment increase are present to answer any questions pertaining to, to their specific requests. Or I'm happy to take any questions you may have now. Thank you. Okay. Having no questions, um, I will now uh, ask Billy Martin, committee clerk, to call the roll. Morning. William Martin, committee clerk, roll call vote committee on finance. Items are coupled. Chair Drum. Aye. I get the rest. Aye. Gibson. Good morning. I vote aye. Thank you. Just told the Carnegie. I don't know. Combo. I vote. I vote aye. Thank you. Kozlowitz. I vote aye. Rosenthal. Mm -hmm. I vote aye. Van Bramer. Aye. Grodenchik. Aye. Adam. Aye. Thank you. 
A ja vás. Aj Voraj. Jonas. Aj. Moja. Aj Voraj. Powers. Vodai, and I just want to welcome and acknowledge my friends from the Bryan Park bid who are here today as well, and uh, vote. we're voting on their item here as well, and I vote aye. Thank you. Lewis. Permission to explain my vote? I take that as a yes. Um, I want to thank Chair Drum and the finance team for your support to ensure we can vote on the reassessment of the Flatbush Nostrand bid located in my district. Your vote, everyone's vote today will keep black immigrant and women owned small businesses alive in these troubling times. And I vote aye on all. Matteo. Aye. Thank you once more woman. Okay, by a vote of 15 in the affirmative, zero in the negative and no abstentions, all items have been adopted by the committee. Thanks. Okay, thank you very much. And I'd like to thank my colleagues for um, uh, coming in early today. Uh, this meeting is adjourned at uh, approximately, what time is it now? 9.20 in the morning. Thank you very much. Thank you.